In this video, I want to explain and share tips for every unique action of all 30 characters in the Three Hubs demo, aka these are the first characters you're going to get in the main game. Unique action abilities are what give each character their own playstyle, display classes, sharing movesets. Hopefully this can help you figure out some things at the start of the game and maybe make you want to try out a new character. If you want to do your own testing or practice some combos, do note that when abilities do trigger, they appear in the upper left. This is a good way to tell you're doing something right. For this video, I'll be mentioning some combos. I don't know if there's a proper naming system, but I'm going to label them as 1RS for 1 regular attack into strong attack. So 4RS would be 4 regular attacks into the strong attack finisher. If I mention a full regular attack chain, just keep doing regular attacks. Now let's get started. First up, our protagonist Shez. Shadow Flash lets Shez occasionally defeat non-commander units when attacking, increasing with hit count. I believe this effect is tied to the RNG purple horizontal slashes, and if the effect procs enemies have a dark red slash on them, it's really hard to see, but basically just hit more enemies and you have a chance to one-shot the cannon fodder. Second part to Shadow Flash is activated with ZR. You can hold it down to dash until the gauge runs out, but you can still get hit. You can use it as a longer range dodge for the purpose of canceling out of combos or chasing after enemies you knock back. Let's now go over each house's characters, starting with the Black Eagles. Edelgard's solar prominence is always active, imbuing her attacks with fire. Fire attacks can ignite enemies, and ignited enemies can combust for what I assume is more damage. It's not really explained. Any class Edelgard uses can get perma fire element to their attacks, but the house leader's unique effects are meant to go with their unique classes. Edelgard's Armored Lord and Emperor classes have an ability called Emperor's Ploy, which guarantee ignited enemies explode when you use their class actions. The Armored Lord's class action is also fire, so basically, swing away, burn enemies, and make them explode. For Hubert, his Dark Conjuration is incredible. Every attack he makes has a chance to impale an enemy with a Dark Spike. You can keep attacking spiked enemies to power it up, which is quite noticeable, and then press ZR to detonate all spikes to inflict Dark Damage. This has no cooldown, and Dark Damage can inflict Spellbound, which lowers defense and res on foes, so this is a solid ability for any class. Give it a try with a bow, and Hubert racks up the spikes insanely fast. Ferdinand's maximum ambulation is just pure plain fun. At 300 hits, Ferdy gains a speed boost proportional to hit count. Just keep hitting enemies and Ferdinand gains after images, he attacks faster, and he moves faster. More attacks means more damage, so a simple but good unique ability. As far as I could tell, at least for level 1 of this ability, Ferdinand gains a second tier of speed boost at 1500 hits. He turns slightly blue at this point. I kept testing till 5000 hits, but did not see another tier. Linhardt's Easy Breezy is one of the more lackluster unique actions. When you complete a regular attack chain, he spawns two wind orbs that periodically deal wind damage ahead of him. They follow Linhardt, but they attack very slowly and barely apply the wind torn status. You do need to reactivate this ability every so often. Unless Easy Breezy attacks faster or applies more wind damage at later levels, I'm not sure how useful that's going to be later on. Next up, Casper's One for the Books is another basic ability. When you do strong attacks, hold down the button and you increase the range and damage of the attack. No need to time anything, just hold it down and Casper will unleash the empowered attack when it's ready. Obviously, more damage and range are great, but you're open to getting hit. I assume this skill will let Casper charge up for longer for more risk reward playstyle as it levels up. This ability may be more interesting when we unlock advanced and master classes, which should come with more combos. For Bernadette's personal space ability, hit ZR to deploy a circular field that freezes enemies and increases crit rate. This field lasts for 30 seconds and has about a 1 minute and 30 second cooldown, so downtime of 1 minute. This field will freeze just about any enemy that comes close, but it does not move. I think Bernie is supposed to camp in her field and shoot arrows from within, so this ability may do worse on melee classes that move around a lot. As for the crit rate bonus, I don't know how much it grants, but I believe the field helps any ally within it, so you could lay it down, or you could lay down Bernie's field, then other allies can attack from within for some crits. Dorothea's unique action is going to be Prismatic Resonance, and this one is a bit random. When doing regular attacks, there is a chance to spawn musical notes around Dorothea, and attacking those notes will trigger elemental shockwaves. At least for level 1, Dorothea only spawns fire, lightning, and light notes. As a mage, I think the idea is that you use the mage class action to aim and hit the orbs. But, the mage regular attacks are so widespread that you'll likely tag anything in front of you. I'm not fully sure what to make of this ability since I don't think there are benefits to applying multiple status effects to enemies. If anything, it's extra AoE and damage just for attacking. 
Petra's Windstorm ability is quite interesting. It's simply longer dodge distance, but it does deal wind damage, and I found that it allows Petra to chain combos extremely well. For example, you can chase after targets sent flying similar to Shez, but since Windstorm deals damage, Petra can knock up enemies from the ground, and that lets you sort of juggle them longer. Since this modifies Petra's dash, there is no cooldown, but the dash itself doesn't deal huge damage, so it's mainly to gap close and continue comboing. Monica's Wicked Impulse is one that requires timing on your attacks. After the first regular attack, a circular indicator closes inward and you need to attack as it reaches the center. There is a sound indicator as well, and I like to think of this like the fishing minigame from the monastery. Time it right, and a red shockwave emits from Monica adding some damage. Now, Wicked Impulse does seem a bit tailored to the mage classes, specifically because to imbue the shockwave with an element, I believe the attack has to have an element itself. That means this only works on the mage's strong attack combos, and Monica's support ability increases damage against enemies with status effects, so she really is meant to be a mage. If you can imbue attacks with an element in a different way, then it Wicked Impulse may also benefit from that. The Black Eagles get two non-students at the start. First is Manuela, who has the Thunderous Refrain unique action. Very solid ability. Simply attack enemies and Manuela gets a lightning damage field around her. Keep attacking to fill the gauge on the right side and when it's full, press ZR to detonate the field for some damage and knockback. Lightning damage applies shock to enemies and knocking them back discharges them for extra AoE and it spreads shock to enemies around that. So you're going to want to shock enemies within the lightning field, press ZR to knock them back. You can also knock back enemies with the full regular attack chain in the Prius class, or do the three regular attacks into strong attack combo. I think Manuela would do well in a melee class with this unique action. Last, Eurytus Quietus action has two parts to it. Attack enemies to fill the gauge in the bottom right. When you hit around 25%, Eurytus' weapon starts to glow, and this means you passively get a damage boost. Completely fill the gauge and press ZR to attack with a big sight for big damage. Now, I thought you had to use this with Eurysis support ability, which improves crit rate on 4 HP foes. However, unless I have godly RNG, Quietus just always crits regardless. Basically, you can use it at will. The downtime to get the attack boost back is so short, you can treat it almost like a free combat art since it very often reveals the stun gauge on foes. Moving on to the blue lines, Dimitri's Azure Lightning just makes all his attacks deal lightning damage. Like Monwala, you want to shock enemies then send them flying like Team Rocket. Now, how do I send enemies flying consistently? Well, Dimitri's King's Might supportably triggers when you send foes flying, so you can see exactly what moves do this. For Dimitri's High Lord class, this happens on his full regular attack chain and his 3RS combo aka the Beyblade Spin. However, the High Lord class lets Dimitri charge up strong attacks like Caspar, and this charge up creates new knockback combos. When charging, two regular into strong and four regular into strong now proc King's Might. The charged up Beyblade also still works. Generally speaking, I noticed on any class the full regular attack chain and 3RS combo are the ones that send enemies flying. For Dudu's Demolisher action, he can charge his strong attacks and they trigger blasts that deal damage. Not stated in the description, but this is fire damage, so it can ignite enemies. Additionally, Dudu's preferred class is Arbid Knight, and the Arbid Knight has the Impregnable class ability, which prevents you from being knocked back when performing a strong attack. That would seem to synergize with Demolisher's charge up, but I have been knocked out of the attack, so I don't know how impregnable the impregnable ability actually is. Felix's Intense Velocity increases his speed when you do a dodge during an attack string. This stacks up to 7 times, and like Ferdinand, you know you're at 7 stacks when Felix turns slightly blue. There is a timer between proccing Intense Velocity, signified in the bottom right. You'll know you did it right when the timer resets. If you don't reactivate this ability, Felix has to start all over, but you can literally just attack, dodge, attack, dodge over and over, and you'll get back to 7 stacks. Now, like Petra, Intense Velocity does deal damage, but without the extra range and needing to attack first, I'm not sure if you can use it to juggle foes. It's more about the speed boost for Felix. Next, we have Ash's Win Stance, hold ZR to bring up a target, and move with left stick to place a zone of win. Similar movement to the Archer's class action. This field lasts for 15 seconds and its cooldown is about 1 minute, so 45 second downtime. Any enemy who walks in the field gets tossed up, and they take some wind damage which can apply wind torn. For commanders, you do kind of need to knock them out yourself though, so you can't do combos that knock enemies out of it. 
at the moment, I feel a bit lost on this ability. It does provide some AoE safety, but you can knock enemies out of the field really easily and it only lasts for 15 seconds. If the cooldown gets shorter with levels, this may become a stronger ability, but I don't know how to feel about it. You can add it to the end of a combo though if you're looking for some extra damage. Sylvain's so Gordon Stroke increases his attack range and damage in proportion to his hit count. Pretty basic, but very fun to look at. At 300 hits, Sylvain's weapon turns yellow for tier 1, at 900 hits it turns orange for tier 2, and finally at 1500 hits it turns red, looking like a Sith Lord with a Sephiroth sized lightsaber. For my brief testing, it appeared at the last tier, Sylvain was doing almost double damage, so definitely worth keeping those hit counts up. Ingrid's Icy Plunge deals ice damage when you send enemies flying. You can tell it's working in a similar way to Dimitri because Icy Plunge always activates on certain combos and you'll see enemies explode with icy particles. Ice damage can freeze enemies, so it's an incredibly good perk. Once again, to send enemies flying, almost always the full regular attack chain triggers Icy Plunge. Additionally, the 3RS combo also triggers it. For the Pegasus Knight class when you're flying, Icy Plunge triggers off the full regular attack combo and the 2RS combo. For any a class you're playing, just check the upper left for one Icy Plunge procs. Next, Mercedes's Radiant Love is sort of the opposite of Yuritsa's unique action. Attack enemies to fill a gauge, and at 25%, Mercy starts to passively heal herself over time. It's not a ton, but it does proc decently often. When the gauge is full, press ZR and Mercy summons some orbital laser beams which deal damage and also heals allies. This can heal Mercy herself too since I think it is light magic and her lift to serve support ability heals Mercy when she heals an ally. With her priest class, Mercedes can heal herself a ton already and being able to heal allies might be pretty useful for things like hard mode. You do need to attack a decent amount to charge Radiant Love but a team healer is pretty neat. Okay, so Annette's Courageous Aria is one of the most complex unique actions, acting as a semi-random team support ability. Attack enemies to fill the gauge on the right and press ZR when full to buff Annette and nearby allies. You can receive three buffs at random. First, units attacks will be imbued with an element based on the unit. I haven't tested this enough or on every other blue line, but Annette gets special benefits in the mage class. She will imbue her attacks with wind damage, and she empowers the two wind combos the mage has. First is the 1RS combo, and Annette procs a second and third wind blast after the first. For the 4RS combo, she summons three tornadoes instead of one. If you get the elemental buff, try these combos out. Now for buff number two, you're going to increase speed. This is like Felix or Ferdinand's unique actions. Basically, you attack and move faster, which means you can charge up another courageous aria buff. Last buff might be incredibly strong. All attacks become critical. Yeah, that has the potential to be really good, especially if units have crit based perks. You'll know you have this one when you see all yellow damage numbers or really bright red slashes. For some tips, Annette will always buff her adjutant, so you can swap in if you see the crit buff, for example. As for buffing allies on the field, if you hold the L shoulder button, you'll get a white ring. It's not exact, but if an ally is generally within that circle, you should buff them as well. The range is definitely farther than the indicator that appears around a net. As for the length of these buffs, each one lasts 20 seconds. Last up is Rodrigue. His martial prowess is similar to Monica's unique action. Time your attacks as the yellow circle reaches the middle and Rodrigue gets bonus damage, attack range, and knockback rate. I don't think I mentioned it for Monica, but even if you mess up in the combo, you can continue it and Martial Prowess can still be activated throughout. Last house is the Golden Deer, starting with Claude's Dust Cloud. He imbues all his attacks with wind and his leader's acumen and support ability increases his awakening gauge when attacking enemies launched in the air. Wind torn enemies also take extra damage in the air, so Claude wants to juggle enemies in the sky for as long as he can. His unique class has some nice moves, but if you want to keep foes in the sky, I suggest using 1RS and 4RS combos. The most consistent combo I could find was 1RS, which is the tail flip, then do 4 regular into strong for the tornado, and you can either chain regular hits or use the wyvern's fireball after that. Last tip, if you dismount, Claude's class action becomes the archer's rain of arrows. If you charge it to the second circle, Claude's arrows deal fire damage instead of wind. Hilda's lightning bound lets her charge up strong attacks to increase damage and deal lightning damage. While charging, she also pulls enemies in a cone in front of her toward her so she can smack them. You don't have to fully charge the attack to deal lightning damage, but Hilda does deal more damage if you charge it all the way. You can also turn while charging to pull in more enemies. 
to discharge shocked foes. If you use the Brigand class, you can use the reliable 3RS combo, the Whirling Spin move, the full regular attack chain works too. A good combo I found was to do 1RS to shock enemies and uppercut them right in front of Hilda. Then you do a full regular attack chain to discharge them. Before doing my testing, I was about to write off Lawrence's Rondo of Roses as kinda not good. Turns out, I didn't watch the tutorial video long enough because the description is sort of misleading. So, attacking enemies fills the ability gauge. When filled, press ZR to damage foes in front and lift them in the air. This is okay damage, but there's a second part which is or might be more useful. When you fill the gauge above 50%, it turns bright yellow and Lawrence is surrounded by roses. This signifies that the next attack that hits Lawrence will be automatically blocked and enemies get staggered around him. You don't have to do anything. Blocking a hit like this takes up about 30 or 33% of the gauge. This is amazing because literally Lawrence can just keep attacking, you fill Rondo Roses back up, and it's going to block damage for him. He fills the gauge relatively quickly, so if you just keep hitting, you can shrug off singular attacks, and if you aren't in danger, you can use the active for some bonus damage and crowd control. If you don't like dodging or guarding, Lawrence might be for you. For Raphael's Priya Brawn, it's another charge based ability, but he can charge regular and strong attacks. That charged hit deals more damage and has greater knockback and more likely to reduce the stun gauge. After this hit, Raphael glows yellow and gains bonus damage. At level 1, he can reach tier 2, which I think is after doing 7 charged hits, uh, not completely sure on that. Raphael will glow orangey when he reaches tier 2. At level 2 of the skill, he can reach 3 tiers, and at level 3, he can reach 4 tiers. Similar to Felix, you have a timer to keep the tiers of bonus damage. Doing a charged hit doesn't fully reset the timer either, so you do need to do multiple charge hits early on. Pure Brawn is a more intensive ability, but that means Raphael may get reported more if you can keep charging and comboing. Ignatz's Dreamer's Paintbrush is one of those random base skills. When you send enemies flying, Ignatz splatters them with random paint that stays on the ground, and different colored paint deal different elemental damage. Currently, I've only seen orange paint deal fire damage, dark blue deals lightning damage, and the teal color deals ice damage. I haven't seen anything else. Unfortunately, if you play as an archer only, the only move that sends enemies flying is the full regular attack chain. If you just want to play Splatoon, you may want to try the mercenary class who has class actions that just knock back enemies naturally. If enemy density is high, Ignatz might be pretty strong. You do need to find which combos send enemies uh, flying though. Next is Lysithia, who shares some similarities with Ignatz. Cursed Expulsion deals dark damage when you send enemies flying. We have another character who really wants to know which combos send enemies flying. At least for a mage, Lysithia can do the full regular attack chain, or 3RS. Dark damage applies the spellbound status, and if enemies are spellbound, Lysithia can press ZR to draw them back to her. This has a short cooldown unlike Hubert's skill. While the extra dark damage on knockbacks is great, when you use Cursed Expulsions active, I think it does get rid of Spellbound on the enemy, and I don't think it does damage. This is bad because Spellbound lowers defense and res, plus enemies can't guard damage. I don't really care about pulling in the cannon fodder since they die so fast, so I'm not entirely sure if the active is worth using. I'd rather just deal more damage to the commanders when they are spellbound, although this could be used for crowd control. Like Ignatz, if you really want to proc the Dark Explosions on mobs, then the Myrmidon Sword classes might be worth a try. Lots of knockback moves means more Dark Damage Explosions. Marianne's Snow Slip is one of the strongest unique actions in my opinion so far. At 300 hits, spawns falling ice orbs that deal ice damage, and that means a lot of frozen enemies. Like Sylvain's action ability, the spawn rate of the ice orbs increases at 900 hits, and then increases again at 1500 hits. The orbs follow Marianne, so she basically has a somewhat perma-free zone surrounding her if you keep the hits going. No matter what class you choose for Marianne, Snow Slip is just universally useful. Leonie's careful study ability requires you to do full regular attack chains. She can then continue the combo with a second set of regular attacks that are faster, with the final regular attack in the chain or a strong attack dealing bonus damage. Basically, Leonie can naturally chain multiple regular attack strings and the second set will be much faster. I wonder if the leveled up version of the skill will let her chain 3 or 4 attack strings at super speed, that would be pretty fun. Definitely seems like Leone will prefer classes with good regular attacks. Maybe the Bow Knight class will synergize with this ability nicely. 
our 30th and last character in the demo and non-student for the Golden Deer is Shamir. Shamir has the timing scale for this route, cold calculation. Time her regular or strong attacks as the blue circle clumps to the center and Shamir's attacks gain ice damage and increase crit rate. I think this is another great ability because freezing enemies is just so good. Shamir can freeze commanders with basic attacks and that means you're taking less damage which means less pressure to time your attacks. As for the increased crit rate, I felt it was noticeable, but maybe that's because arrows hit so many enemies at once. Either way, freezing foes and more crits is just solid all around. Another skill that can benefit pretty much any class you choose. That will do it for the unique action abilities of the first 30 characters in Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes. There will be more characters to play as, but I gotta play the full game first. I do plan to make some videos for 3 Hopes, so stick around. The game launches very soon and I'm very excited. Maybe we'll do an updated guide for all the characters in 3 Hopes, but if I do that, I'll probably try to split it up a bit. This is just a quick overview from everyone in the demo. This is definitely a game where experimenting with different classes and characters is encouraged. We also have the advanced and master class movesets to try out, so I'm sure there's a lot left to figure out. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.